Hello, Trends attendees. I'm Becky Goldsmith with Piece of Cake, and I'm very happy to be part of this event hosted by E.E. E. Shank. I'm here to talk to you today about my new book, Birds in Toyland, and I want to give you some ideas about how you can demo wool applique in your shop. You can do your demonstration on any block in the book. I have chosen to begin with block number one. I'm going to focus on shapes one and seven. Once you have the pattern printed to the size you want, you will need to have a placement overlay drawn and ready to go. Um, I drew mine on the clear vinyl that comes from C&T and I used an ultra fine point Sharpie marker. The other thing to already have made are the templates that you'll be using. I explain in the book how to copy the pattern onto either plain paper or the English paper piecing paper, which is a really nice cardstock. I cover the templates with a peel and stick laminate. It's available at office supply stores. I make the templates and cut them out. Templates are finished size. Remember too during the demo that while you pull this out and your templates out, you can explain that the instructions for making these are in the book. I like to use soft fuse on my wool applique. It holds the wool in place on the block nicely and helps to keep it from fraying. And soft fuse is soft enough, it is the perfect choice for wool applique. You can either trace your shapes before the demo or during the demo. In the book, I suggest that you place an X on the template on any area that's going to fall underneath another shape and that you transfer that X to the fusible web. And that's because you need a little more fusible web on any area that's going to fall underneath another shape so that the shape that falls on top uh, will cover it. Next, cut the shapes out, leaving a buffer of paper and fusible web around the outside of each shape. And again, you can do this while people watch or you can have it already done. Have a wool pressing mat ready to go and a Teflon sheet. This happens to be a big goddess sheet. I like it a lot. And I like to put the Teflon sheet both above and below the wool when I'm pressing it. Soft fuse does not like to be too hot, so set your iron to the wool silk setting. You might have to do a little testing and don't use steam. I've got my wool mat, the Teflon pressing sheet, my wool, the shapes turned fusible side down. I'm going to put the goddess sheet also on top. Refer to the instructions on the fusible web. It says three to five seconds. I believe them. So I count. One, two, three, four, five. You can test the edges, make sure it's stuck, and once you're sure you're good to go, cut this out on the outer lines. I've already pressed the background in half horizontally and vertically and marked the ends of those lines so that when I place the overlay over the background I can get it all centered. I'm right handed so really this is going to be easier for me if I turn it. I'm going to get number one in position and I've pulled the paper off of that before I put it down. I'm going to pull the paper off of the tree. Now I'm going to slide the tree in position. And this too is an excellent opportunity to tell your customers about how placement overlays work and all of the many places they can use them. Because any applique is positionable with an overlay like this. 
All right, that's good to go. I'm going to carefully remove the overlay, place the Teflon sheet back on top, and take my iron and hold it. One, two, three, four, five. Move up. One, two, three, four, five. And sometimes I will have the Teflon under and over the background. I didn't hear mostly because of the camera. This is stuck down pretty well, but I'm going to give it just a little more heat from the back side, maybe a count of one, two, three. Let this cool before you test it too much. I like to use wool thread with wool applique shapes because it hides so well. This is from Wonderfill. You could use a pearl cotton or some other thread, depending on what you like in your own shop. I'm using Bowen's number no. nine Cruel Embroidery Needle. It is a very nice embroidery needle, but there are a variety of embroidery needles on the market that you might rather use in your own demonstration. It never hurts to teach people tricks for how to thread the needle. You can use needle threaders, but that trick I just did is pretty handy. Once you have your needle threaded and before you start sewing, you might want to add a pin or two or three just to make sure the shape stays in place. You can use other pins, but I really like Karen K. Buckley's Shorter Perfect Pins with Wool because they are so fine and so flexible, they don't distort the wool while you're working. I begin on the back of the shape so that I can bury the tail of thread on the back. So I'm running the needle toward the edge of the applique on the underside of the wool. And I'm going to pull that tail to there. And then I'm going to do a, the same knot that I use for ending. I'm going to use it here for beginning. So you catch a little bit of the background, make a loop, pull it through. And that is a nice, secure knot. Then turn your work to the front and bring your needle up inside the edge of the applique by a scant eighth of an inch, perhaps. This is very much like an invisible applique stitch. So where the needle goes in is next to the edge of the applique, right there. You go straight down Find your underneath finger, turn the needle to travel to the left, and then you come up and catch the applique fabric. Don't pull your thread too tight because it might make a divot in the wool. And here I want to make sure that I catch for sure all the way through those layers of wool. The thread is fuzzy, the fabric is fuzzy. Could I have sewn the tree trunk first? Yes, I could have. The reason I didn't was because on camera I wanted to show you the tree. So this stitch can either be your final stitch, you whip the pieces down, call it done, and you are, you are finished, or it can be the beginning of where you're going next. And it's possible that that might be future demos in your shop if you wanted to get people going with this part of the wool applique, the functional part, the part that holds the shapes to the block, and then come back and give more information about how to embellish. You can tailor your demos to your time frame and the audience you've got. And know that all of these techniques and more are inside the book. And you can use them all in much the same way that I have shown you what I've shown you today.
If you have any questions, I'm only an email away. Thank you so much for watching, and may you have many happy stitches.